This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Um, so, uh, with the presence of a quorum, uh, I call this meeting of the Amherst School Committee to order at 4.05 p.m. Um, and we are being recorded and live streamed on the web and in um, on Amherst Media on Channel 15. Thank you very much, Amherst Media. Um, and thank you for um, coordinating um, Mike and, and uh, the district IS team for coordinating us being able to meet virtually. This is um, a, a grand experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I saw you just shared the the meeting packet. Should I present that? Um, our first order of business is to um, approve our minutes from our last meeting, March second, um, which is in the packet. Does everybody have that? Yeah. Okay. So I'll just give a moment for folks to look at that. I did have um, one comment on um, under item three. Um, it said Ms. McDonald discussed the sealed by literacy group. It was the um, bilingual uh, advisory committee was the, was the group and talking about the, the presentation of the seal of by literacy. So that was the only uh, correction that I had. Anybody else? Yeah, um, Alice, do you want us to raise our hand when we uh, want to speak? That's a good idea, yes. Okay. Mr. Demling. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on item G, Joint Capital Planning Committee, uh, I think it was myself and Ms. Spitzer that uh, volunteered. It just says uh, Mr. Demling. Okay. Any other yeah. ads? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Harrington? On the, um, let's see, there's the section two approval of minutes. Uh, this was seconded by Mr. Harrington. I'm H E R R I N G T O N, not H A. Yeah. And also in the attendance list as well. Yeah. Okay. I think that was all right. Anything else? Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion? Mr. Demling? I move to approve the minutes of March 2nd, 2020. Moved by Mr. Demling, seconded by Mr. Harrington. Yes. Any further discussion? Um, all, since we're on screen, I think I'm gonna ask for a voice vote. Um, yeah, I, I was gonna say, I think part of the instructions that we got from, at least that I saw from MASC is that every single vote in a remote meeting has to be a roll call vote. Great. So um, uh, I will proceed. Uh, accordingly. Um, Mr. Harrington? Yes. Mr. Demling? Yes. Ms. Spitzer? Aye. And McDonald? Aye. Approved 4 0. Good. Um, next on our agenda is our school choice vote. Uh, Dr. Morris, do you want to introduce this? Um, I think there's um, item 2A and new new and continuing business. Is... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, yes. So our, our 
first order of business after that is um, to uh, vote to temporarily suspend policy BEDH, which is our public comment period. Um, and just as background, um, the, the rationale for this is right now, um, we are still working on figuring out a technical um, solution to enabling public comment. And um, until we have that um, solved or um, addressed, uh, we would like to temporarily suspend public comment for, for this meeting. Any questions, discussion? No? Uh, Mr. Oh, sorry. I have the chat window open and I couldn't see your hand up there. Um, Mr. Demling. Yeah, um, just briefly to say that um, I think given literally the state of emergency that we're operating under, it, it makes sense. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is consistent with what the town council uh, is currently doing. Um, and, um, you know, there's, there's nothing that prevents us as we move forward, depending on how long we have to be meeting remotely uh, to figure out a, a way that's that's amenable and, and manageable. Um, and certainly there's a lot of different ways the public can get in touch with us. Um, I would still encourage anybody on any topic, um, even if it's not related to the current uh, emergency situation to contact us at school committee at, at arps.org uh, or just contact us. Our individual school committee emails are also uh, on the post on the website. Um, so, you know, we remain open for business and open for uh, input from the public. Uh, it's just that I think as we're ramping up and starting up on this, it, um, it's just another layer of uh, complication that doesn't make sense. So that's it. Yep. Um, and I, uh, just to add to that, I, um, on my, on my walk this morning, I ran into a, a town councilor, Mandy Jo Haneke, and I understand from her that they are um, working on a solution um, for Monday's meeting to be able to have public comment. Um, so more, more to come on, on there. So we'll be learning um, from them as well as our own experience here. Any other comments or discussion? No. Okay. So I'll make I'll make the motion. Um, I move to temporarily suspend policy BEDH on public comment um, for this meeting of the Amherst School Committee. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Ms. Spitzer. Is there any further discussion? Okay, so move to a vote. Mr. Harrington? Yay. Mr. Demling? Aye slash yay slash yes. <laughs> Ms. Spitzer? Aye. McDonald, aye. Carries 4-0. Okay, so now we move on to the school choice vote. Sure, um, so at the last meeting we had the school choice hearing. Uh, what was uh, my recommendation is to be um, remain a school choice district, really looking only at grade kindergarten and a pretty limited number of students. Um, we talked in the neighborhood of eight to 10, um, just because we know with future building projects and, and future other uh, plans, we wanna make sure we're not boxing ourselves in um, in terms of the infrastructure, uh, but with eight to 10 students, we certainly, we feel comfortable and confident we wouldn't be doing that. And it maintains both the financial impact of school choice, but also the community impact of school choice, which uh, both of which are, in my opinion are positive. So uh, my recommendation is that there'd be a vote to, uh, for the Amherst Public Schools to be a school choice district for the 2021 school year. And of course, if there's questions or comments, Sorry, I muted myself, but if there's any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer. Any questions from the committee? Mr. Demling. Uh, yeah, I just, just brief, briefly comment that I appreciate the way that we're using school choice at the elementary level, um, topping off the spaces and the, the teacher resources that we already have and not adding space and resources. Um, and as Ms. Dr. Morris has, said at multiple meetings, it enables us hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of services and staff uh, to enrich uh, what we have available for, for everyone. So I, I appreciate that we're using it judiciously. Um, 
and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to vote in support of it. Any other comments or questions? Somebody want to make a motion? Um, I, I will make the motion. Um, I move to approve the uh, school choice proposal to for Amherst to remain a school choice district for uh, school year 2021. Second. Moved by McDonald, seconded by Demling. Um, I'll go the other direction. Um, Ms. Spitzer. You're muted. Aye. Spitzer, aye. Mr. Demling? Aye. Mr. Harrington? Aye. And McDonald, aye. It carries four to zero. Uh, next is the Student Opportunity Plan Act vote. Sure. So uh, the background on this is the in the fall, as was talked about at the Amherst School Committee, the legislature passed the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, you know, I'll say personally and professionally, I think it was the right thing to do. Uh, it will not merit a result in the Amherst Public Schools getting funds that, that weren't anticipated, with the exception perhaps of charter, although that I think that's a it's a moving target, so we'll see how that um, that that goes. Um, but um, as a requirement of the Student Opportunity Act, each district in the Commonwealth had to come up with or has to come up with a Student Opportunity Act plan. And um, what you're seeing for Amherst is uh, the same for all three districts, actually, because we're not getting significant new funds. Uh, it's called the short form, so it's a two-page plan for districts getting over a million and a half of new income. Which there's about four or five of them in Western Massachusetts, like Holyoke, West Springfield, Springfield, Chicopee. Um, they have a seven or eight page long form that is much more detailed. But there was some acknowledgement uh, by the Department of Education, which I appreciate that there would be some differentiated uh, expectations for districts that had large streams of revenue, at least it looked at the time coming in, uh, versus districts like our own. Um, so uh, what you see is a two page document, which was the expectation of the department for districts like ours. Um, it, as I said, relatively brief. Um, it follows um, kind of their template. Um, so all their their the templates in blue, and and the writing of the district was in uh, the black font. And um, I think the short story is uh, there is a question about whether this date will be pushed back. Um, it was originally due to be voted by April first. Uh, that being said, the plan has already been developed, shared by the, our administrative team, shared with every um, parent guardian and every staff member for feedback in uh, maybe two, three, three weeks ago, I believe, in the, my newsletter. Um, so if the committee is comfortable, I, you know, uh, moving, voting to move forward, that's great. Uh, if the committee would like to wait, it seems like that timeline will push back. Um, but uh, for me, the inertia is it's been drafted. Um, and if the committee is comfortable, I, I just as well uh, have it submitted because uh, we think it's it's, the, it's right for our district. It's the right direction to go in. Uh, we could always go back and make an edit later, um, you know, and revise it uh, as things change with our budget or other matters. Um, but it's really up to the will of the committee whether you want to take it up tonight and have it voted or you'd like more time, uh, which it looks like will be granted by the legislature to vote at a later date. Any comments or questions from the committee? Seeing, oh, Mr. Demley. Um, yeah, just, I mean, I know this is small money compared to the overall budget, but I do appreciate that it's uh, targeted at math intervention, um, uh, given how many different student groups that affects and that we're rolling in uh, a new math curriculum, at least at the sixth grade level. Um, so I, I appreciate that. It'll, it'll be interesting to see what this becomes in future years, even though it is small money. From what I understand of the Student Opportunity Act, there were supposed to be targets that DESE provided, or at least the commissioner provided, um, that these were then 
drafted towards. So without those targets, it's a little uh, hard to understand exactly what they're looking for. But I'm assuming in this year, they're not going to be that picky. So um, I'm happy to vote for it tonight. Yes, and, and even prior to the, the crisis that we're in, the health public health crisis we're in, uh, they were pretty clear they weren't going to have all those ducks in a row. Uh, before April 1st that we were supposed to do our best and know that it was a multi-year plan. I think now that MCAS in general is in question, um, that's probably being generous. Uh, at the moment, I think, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of things the state will have to figure out and this is relatively low on the totem pole. But, you know, for me, I be, you know, we believe in everything that's in the document for all the reasons Mr. Demling said. We believe that we need to do more and provide a more equitable outcome, for, in, particularly in, in all subjects, but particularly in mathematics. Uh, and if there was no Student Opportunity Act, we'd be doing the same things that we're talking about doing here. So um, it's a it's a box that might get a check uh, and we can send it off and they may not look at it for months. But uh, from, from our perspective, we'd um, if, it, if the committee agrees, we'd rather check the box than have to come back to it. I'm, I'm seeing nodding heads. So I'm taking that to, to <laughs> mean that we would like to move to a vote. Uh, if no one's going to make a motion, then I will. Um, I move to vote to approve our uh, submission for the Student Opportunity Plan Act. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second, I get to Mr. Harrington. <laughs> Just change it up a little. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed with a vote. Um, Mr. Demling. Aye. Mr. Harrington. Aye. Ms. Spitzer. Aye. And McDonald, aye. So the, uh, carries uh, by vote of four to zero. Thank you so much, appreciate it. And moving on to item D, appoint budget coordinating group members. Um, uh, this was a question that uh, Dr. Morris and I were talking about whether we already have people appointed to this this coordinating group, um, but also given the current uh, emergency and crisis and, and situation, there there is a need for us to ensure that we do have members appointed to this group. Um, and Dr. Morris, maybe you can provide a little bit more introduction on this. Absolutely. So the budget coordinating group um, is a group um, that has both elected officials and uh, a more limited number of staff from different departments in the town. So the library, you know, the other town staff, the schools, and they get together to look at the state of, of uh, the finances in the community. Um, and they're often years um, and coordinate uh, between the needs of different departments. Um, this year was a, had been a relatively quiet year, um, so um, that's changed uh, for all sorts of reasons, but including financially and budgetarily. So this is a group that will be meeting in the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll be meeting shortly to look at the current situation, uh, the financial, and again, this isn't to minimize the health and human safety aspects of what people are dealing with, but uh, we also have to be uh, looking at the other aspects as well, because that's we do have a financial fiduciary obligation uh, in our community, and the the impact is is significant. Um, I think I think everyone can see that if they drive through downtown Amherst, and so uh, we want to make sure that the school committee is represented with two members uh, who meet with again with other town staff members um, as well as other elected officials, um, board of trust, the library trustees, uh, town council, and I. To be honest, I'm not sure if it's the finance committee or how the town council has it, as well as staff, to be able to have conversations about what the impact's going to be uh, and how we're going to manage it. So, uh, in the past, and and that's been the request that I had received from the town manager. There's uh, typically two members from the Amherst School Committee who sit on this group. Uh, you know, I do want to what's the word? Be honest that this group's probably going to be meeting quite frequently. In the next four weeks, um, the town council voted to extend the timeline of when uh, budgets have to be passed um, by you know this body to May first instead of April first. Uh, that's why budget's not on the agenda. One reason why the budget's not on the agenda tonight. 
Um, but this is, uh, it's a crisis in all sorts of ways. And one of those ways is financial. Um, so uh, I do want to be candid that it will be um, pretty, I'm guessing, pretty regular meetings over the next couple of weeks. Uh, on the flip side, you know, uh, it's incredibly important. Um, there's a lot of concern about the budgets. Um, I'm hearing it from staff as well as community members. And what are the implications going to be? And this is a group that really works and can, br can bring back to the school committee uh, a broader understanding of the town's finances and how that would influence the school budget. Thank you. Thanks. Ms. Spitzer? Apologies. Um, I just have a question if you could give any guidance on the time frame. Do you know if these are going to be daytime meetings, evening meetings? My understanding is that has not been established. Historically, they were in the morning. Um, but um, historically, we didn't have a town council and we weren't in a crisis. So I really don't know exactly um, how it'll go. Uh, and historically, we didn't do virtual meetings, which um, for some people actually makes it more flexible for some less um, as you experienced a couple minutes ago right so um i don't think a time has been established uh historically i think it was like 9 or 9 30 um in the morning but um i would say uh in the communication from the town manager um it seemed like getting the group together and then you know figuring out the timing was probably the second element so i'm sorry i don't have total clarity on that thank you Any other questions? So I'd, I'd be willing to volunteer as, as one of the reps um, on the on the courting group. Um, so would love a, a partner on that um, from from this group if somebody else is willing to volunteer for that as well. I'm interested in serving. I'm just concerned about my ability to be fully present given that I have three kids at home and husband is continuing to work during the day. Um, so I, I don't know what other people's thoughts are. I just want to put that out there that this is something I have an interest in and I think I'd be happy to serve, but I, I'm just trying to figure out how, to, how, to, how I can make it work. Mr. Demling? Um, I mean, I'd be happy to be uh, alternate backup if um, Ms. Spitzer would, would like to join you. And then if once the meeting's scheduled, if it doesn't work out um, for, for your schedule, um, you know, I could I could step in. Um, so if uh, that's a flexible way to go, go at it. Ms. Spitzer. Yeah, and could I follow up? Is this going, this is an adjust, addition to JCPC, which has been temporarily suspended is that i mean just a yeah. follow-up yeah right. it's, it's different oh. than in addition to yeah yeah i was just going to say so jcpc talks about capital funds um the budget coordinating group typically talks uh exclusively well, i don't know about exclusively but the primary piece is the operating budget not the capital budget well i'm, I'm happy to volunteer with the caveat of what I just said, that I'm kind of in a unique, I mean, all of us are in this situation right now, but um, I, my partner has very limited flexibility in his schedule right now. So yeah. to the extent that I can be there, I will be able, I'd love to. Okay. So uh, we'll proceed with uh, Ms. Spitzer and myself as being the representatives pending the schedule, the meeting schedule for that coordinating group and have Mr. Demling and on call as backup if um, if the meeting schedule does not work out um, with Ms. Spitzer's schedule. Sounds good? Okay, I'm seeing thumbs up. <laughs> Great, thank you everybody. Um, okay, so um, now moving on to our next item, which is the school committee vacancy process. There's two items on this, which is the suggested interview questions, as well as um, whether and 
And if yes, what um, selection guidance we would like to offer to both ourselves and um, and the town council. Dr. Morris? I think uh, Lynn Griesmer has called in. Uh, you can't see her image, but I, I see a phone number um, on mine. So oh, yeah. I just wondered if Lynn was here just because um, because this per particular topic is uh, a joint one between uh, the end topic is joint between the Amherst School Committee and the Amherst Town Council. So I just, uh, if Lynn is here, if you could introduce yourself just so that the school committee is aware that you're on the call. Hi, this is Lynn. And I did phone in after not successfully being able to come in by Chrome. So it's fine. <laughs> I'm mostly here to listen, but more than glad to ask, answer questions. And I'm also taking notes as you have your conversation. I probably will mute unless I'm answering a question because otherwise I get an echo. Great, thank you. Yep. Uh, would would folks like me to project the um, share on screen the questions? Would that be helpful? Yes. Let me see if I can pull them up. Um, give me just a sec. Oops. Um, I closed my email, so now I have to go back in. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> you got to it faster than I did. <laughs> since since I'm not going to participate orally in this part, I'm happy to just leave my screen with the questions. Uh, and uh, for anyone who wants to look at the questions, um, if you uh, click on me and there's a little pin, um, and it if you hover over it, it says pin to screen. If you pin me to the screen, you should be able to just see the questions if you want to look on in in larger um in a larger size so again if you hover your um cursor over my over me and there should be a little like thumbtack pin if you click on that that'll pin this image to the screen it actually pinned you to the screen so really <laughs> well, maybe because i hmm that is curious uh let me see does that help um oh if i pin hit the pin on the screen there we go okay yeah yes okay. okay great so this uh this collection of questions is um includes all of the questions that were submitted by uh, school committee members and town council members um, before by a week ago. Um, and it has been discussed already once with, oh, sorry, and then Ms. Griesmer and myself met over the weekend to consolidate um, overlapping questions and collapse them into what you see here. Um, this, this set of questions was discussed at the town council meeting on Monday. Um, and after our discussion tonight, um, Ms. Griesmer and I are meeting tomorrow to wrangle this into what could hopefully be a final list of questions for our um, candidates. Um, it's it, in, just to remind everybody about the, the process is we'll be meeting on the 14th of April. Candidates have until the 31st of March to submit their statements of interest. Um, and then we'll be meeting in a special joint meeting with the town council on the 14th um, to interview the candidates. Um, Ms. Griesmer and myself will be asking the questions from this list of questions or whatever our final list of questions will be. Um, and that's that's sort of the next next steps of the process. And what we want to do is come to that list of final questions um, that, that we can use in interviewing the candidates. I think there was also some discussion about 
holding back uh, one or two questions that the town council president and myself will um, ask uh, of candidates during the interview, but will not be published as part of the packet um, ahead of time. So these, uh, just to give an overview of the, the questions, they're grouped into sort of buckets of similar, um, similar angles, if you will, or thematic. Um, and then roughly in an order that we might propose asking them during the interview meeting. So the first question is, is basically about the, the reason for applying and reasons for interest. Um, the second set of questions is uh, what is about experience with the public schools. Um, the next bucket of questions is aimed at the, their understanding of the role of the school committee. And Mike, I don't know if you can scroll so I can see the, the folks can see the next group. Um, the next big bucket is um, around the MSBA project and our new, new elementary school building project. Um, and a bucket of questions around uh, current and upcoming issues facing the district and the school committee. There's several in that one. Um, and then a last question about uh, community engagement. And during the interview meeting, candidates will get the opportunity to give an opening remark of two minutes and conclude closing remarks of two minutes. And each candidate will be offered the, the opportunity to answer each of these questions with one minute um, as a time limit for their responses. I think some of the feedback um, from, from the town council, which is also perspective that Ms. Griesmer and I shared, but we wanted to bring the full list to, the, to both groups, was that this is a very long list um, and would be a very long interview for any individual, even if it were just one candidate. Um, so ideally, um, we'd get to some sort of prioritization of what are the most important questions or sort of collapsing of these questions. That's my personal opinion. Um, but we'd love to hear sort of thoughts and comments from, from this committee on, on these questions. Can I also just add one more thing? Yes, please. Okay. The, the town council also uh, has suggested that perhaps given that we're doing all of this um, remotely, uh, virtually, excuse me, uh, that perhaps we might want to choose some questions that we would ask for the answer in writing and others that we would do on the phone so that if there is a technology glitch, and we had a terrible one last Monday night, um, that we at least are able to get some feedback from both, all candidates besides their letter of interest. So presumably we would go through if there's questions and like I said, uh, Ms. Griesmer and myself are meeting again tomorrow to to coordinate and um, the input and feedback from both the town council and our and this committee. Um, and we happy to make that decision about which ones would be best in writing and which would be during the interview, but um, would love you know, any any feedback that you all have on that as well. Ms. Spitzer? Again, sorry for the delay. I'm still getting used to this. Um, yes. so I, I fully agree. My first take when I saw this was this is a very long list of questions and depending especially on the number of people who submit statements of interest, I could find it a bit um, overwhelming and in order, and also I could think of our um, our ability to pay attention over a long period of time. And I'd hate to be, if, if there are 16 questions and also four minutes of opening and closing remarks total, I'd hate to be that last candidate who everybody's really tired and has been on a conference call for hours and doesn't get their full attention. So I, I really would support this idea of breaking it into maybe a written component and um, a oral component. And, and the other thing I was thinking is that we could even ask people to like make, 
the videos that we used to make when we you'd go into Amherst video and do your your statement as a candidate you know maybe we could even have it recorded in a in a way if we if we wanted to but um I guess I would just start by highlighting some of the questions I think we might be able to cut is that useful um, yeah so the the number five, which is what role does the school committee play in school or district decisions such as math? I mean, that kind of feels like a quiz, you know, like we're trying to test whether or not they've prepared. Um, but that ideally the answer would be the same from every candidate. And um, so that one seems less interesting to me. Um, I guess if, if I had to choose one of the MSBA questions to cut, it, it would be number 10 um but i you know i'm the the other one i was thinking of with the commandante's dual language program i you know i'm curious about this question but i'm also feeling like it's such a very focused question that i'm not sure um i'm not sure of its utility compared to some of the other ones and um so those would be some of the ones i would consider just off the bat maybe thinking we could we could table or ask for written responses rather than um, an oral response. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's submitted questions and thank you and Lynn for putting this all together. I can tell it it's reflects a lot of work on everybody's part. So thank you. Yeah, I should I should add when um, this this started out as four pages of questions. So <laughs> so we got it down to two. <laughs> I can't see everybody anymore, so I, I don't know um, if anybody else is. Um, I'll just call on um, uh, Mr. Demling or Mr. Harrington if you want to speak. Uh, yeah. If, yep. So okay, go, go ahead. Go ahead now. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Allison. Is that okay to go ahead now? Yes, please. Okay. Um, it's funny, I had the exact same uh, questions that I was going to highlight for the exact same reasons as Ms. Spitzer. <laughs> so, great minds think alike. Um, yeah, I mean, these are all interesting, great questions. It's just a matter of in what will, even in the best case, be a challenging technical environment with 17 plus people on a, a conference call trying to listen to and thoughtfully consider lots of input. It's going to be challenging. So. Um, I mean, I would say uh, it, it's. I, th I, I would I would suggest that you and uh, the town council chair should be should feel empowered to be r ruthlessly pragmatic about whittling this down. I mean, and I totally understand and support the idea that if you cut a question, it's not because it's not a great question. It's just that I would rather have, you know, seven or six questions. Um, rather than have, you know, 13 that were that were more comprehensive. Um, I think between the statement of interest and whatever written portion we ask from ask about um, and these, you know, we should get a pretty good um, chunk of input. So um, I, I wouldn't stress too hard about, um, you know, not including certain topics. I think I think including a, a number of, of general generalized questions like the ones about what are the you know three biggest issues um, and, and how do you engage the public about Big decisions those are broad enough that candidates can take them wherever they want to right so if, if a candidate is really looking for an opportunity to highlight uh, one or or uh, uh, or more aspects of their experience or background I think they'll have the opportunity to do that so I think it's pretty flexible um, and uh, and you shouldn't stress about trying to trying to get eight million <laughs> questions into yep. it yep great mr. Harrington do you have any thoughts that you want to add yeah, I guess we're all pretty much on the same page as far as the ones that have been highlighted so far. The one, the one that I would add to it, because it's it's just based on on personal experience, would be number seven, in terms of how you handle you know criticism and differences of opinion publicly. I think as a candidate, I would have given one answer, and then actually understanding what we do and you know kind of experiencing it, I'll give completely different answers now. <laughs> I would have given you two words before, and I would give you a book now. So I, I, I kind of feel like that one's a little extra. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of whittling it down to seven, eight questions, maybe make it a little more tolerable and easy to digest. 
get to 78 questions. So that that's helpful, um, a target number. Um, Ms. Spitzer or Mr. Demling, do you, do you sort of have a target number that you, you'd suggest as a seven to eight send? Ms. Spitzer? Yes, I'm seeing yeah. that comes up from Mr. Demling, Ms. Spitzer. The one thing I wanted to add was just, um, I mean, we could go with a time frame. So if we think that 15 minutes per person is reasonable and we're giving four minutes for opening and in closing remarks, then that leave in a minute for each question. I guess that seven or one to two minutes for each question. I think that seven to eight would work. Um, okay. So great. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. So I'm hearing. Um, resounding support for deleting questions 5, 10, and 14, and possibly also 7, or and then guidance on staying with the questions that are higher level, broad, general questions that give the candidates room to go down specific or avenues that they would like to, to go in their responses. But, Ms. Spitzer. I would just add that I think it's important we do ask about the MSBA process, um, mm -hmm. even though that's specific, I, I think that's such a big piece of what's going to be coming down the pipeline, we need to ask about it. Okay. I, I really need a thumbs up emoji function on this, uh, on this <laughs> webinar thing. <laughs> so that's a plus one on that one. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Great. Any other thoughts on the, the questions that anybody wants to add before we move on? No. Okay. Great. Um, Thank you. And I yeah. took notes. I did as well. Thank. Um. So the the next piece of the process, um, and there's there's differing um i would say that one of the one of the things in the process that has been discussed um was the potential for the school committee to weigh in and make a statement about how we will be evaluating candidates or what sort of guidance or criteria that we're using as we evaluate the the candidates um to inform how we're going to vote um and there's been conversation in terms of modeling this process off of some of the other processes that town council has put into place for filling vacancies, for example, on the planning board or the um, zoning board of appeals. Um, so, which includes this documentation or creation of a document called uh, selection guidance um, or a criteria for effective characteristics of effective members. Um, and so we've been asked for this. Um, I will say, um, you know, it's up to us. It's a, it's a, it's, it could be a mechanism for us to sort of alert the town, the, our counselors as to what we think is important in selecting a candidate. Um, we could also opt not to do it. Um, it, it's, it, it's not like we're forming the process as, as, as we go in a, in a way. Um, so the document that I drafted, um, I, I think the other thing too is we want to be, we don't want to be dictating sort of how people should be making their decision. Obviously every one of us, um, all 17 of us are going to be making our own decision. So um, the document that I drafted is a way of sort of saying, here's how we're going to think about these candidates, but in a way that really just restates the description of the roles and responsibilities as opposed to getting into um, you know some anything more specific than that um, you know, there's also a school of thought that says that the only requirement that we had in running was that we were residents of Amherst um, which I can you know see that as well however as voters we made we used other things um, in you know in voters use more than that to make a decision on who they're going to vote for. So um, I just put this out there. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to talk about this with anybody other than town councilors. So I'm interested in folks' opinion on 
you know, the first question is, do we want to submit or prepare a document that outlines um, our, our guidance or our thought process for evaluating candidates? Um, and if yes, um, what, how do we want to, we can use the document that I drafted as a starting point for, for finalizing that. What are folks' thoughts? Mr. Deming. So uh, reading through the list and um, I mean, so maybe for the if for, for the folks at home, I'll, I'll, I could just quickly read down the list because it's a pretty short list. Would that, would that be all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's uh, Amherst School Committee Selection Guidance, uh, list of characteristics of effective school committee members uh, intended to assist the committee and town council in evaluating candidates. And so it's uh, six bullets. Uh, it's committed to the mission of the Amherst and Amherst Pelham Regional Schools, commitment and flexibility to attend all meetings of the school committee uh, or most as practically feasible, willingness and ability to participate and contribute to the work of the committees in between meetings, including subcommittees and other ad hoc work, understanding of the responsibilities and roles of the committees, ability to listen to ideas and opinions different than their own, and willingness to work collaboratively with those whose views are different than their own. So when I read this list, I like I, I agree with every one of these principles. I think they're very high level, very positive, um, non-controversial uh, guidelines. And so, I mean, I have no trouble supporting it as a general document. The, the only place I hesitate is, um, is is whether this is something that the town council wants or or not. Um, and so the point you brought up towards the end, I think, is at front of my mind, which is, um, well, I, well, I don't think anybody would want to um, evaluate a candidate who is not committed to the mission of the schools, for example, right? It's not really a debatable uh, um, anything any reasonable person would want. Um, I, I am I am cognizant that this is, you know, this is a, a joint meeting of the town council and the Amherst School Committee, and you know, people uh, on both committees and on the school committee and in the council um, have a right to evaluate and come to their own judgment based on whatever uh, principles and guidelines they, they think is appropriate. So um, if this is something that the town council is really asking for because they're struggling to get a framework around this, I'm more than happy to, you know, wordsmith this up and 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 get something of consensus here. But um, but I, I certainly wouldn't want the town council to feel like we're we're trying to you know, box people in or frame them into how they ought to evaluate people. So I don't know if um, if uh, if Lynn has anything to add to that, maybe based on the discussion of the town council. Um, yeah, we've not, there's been some discussion of this in the town council, but not, there's certainly not a consensus. Some counselors um, believe that when you put your name forward to be elected, the only criteria is that you are a resident of Amherst and registered to vote. That's it, okay? And so therefore having any other criteria in written form is pretty kind of why, okay? And I think Peter, you also reflected what many council, what some counselors feel, and that is um, we'll all be evaluating people based on our own criteria of what we think of the candidates and what we think is important. Having said that, if you can even provide us with this, the, the council wants to totally recognize that we have to go to your four, but this is somebody uh -oh. for the next almost two years, okay? And I don't think people are, people aren't going to sit there and rate candidates based on the criteria okay it is a way sometimes to have a conversation after a meeting that basically says um you know as i look at the candidates after the after the interviews I look at the candidates and so and so seems to be fully comprehending the role of a school committee somebody else might say you know candidates X or Y um, certainly seem to grasp and 
as shown through their previous activity with schools, that they're really out there and willing to be on committees. I mean, it, it sometimes it allows you to formulate if you want to have a conversation between the point that you finish the interviews, which I want to come back to in a moment, and the point at which you actually vote. So let me just mention two things that I just want to go back and reiterate for uh, the school committee. We actually will be interviewing both candidates at the same time. So candidate one will ask, answer the first question, or candidate A will answer the first question. Candidate B will answer the first question. Candidate C will answer the first question. Then when you get to the second question, you start with candidate B. C and A, and you keep doing it. So the same candidate doesn't always get to go first, okay? The other thing that is very important for you to realize, and that is in the protocol that we've written up for this, the school committee votes first, which was another one of our ways as a council saying, we really want to hear what you have to say. We want to really hear where you are on this, okay? That doesn't mean you're going to get all the same votes from the council. It just means they want to respect the school committee uh, and the fact that we're selecting a committee member for your committee. Okay? Is that helpful? Hello? Yep. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody's all muted. All of a sudden, I'm going, hmm, I just talked to thin air. Got it. Yeah. All right. So I think Mr. Harrington had a question or comment. Yeah, so so kind of my thinking, like like when I was reading over this, is is that we weren't necessarily held to this standard, right? I mean, we we absolutely may have been by individuals, but there's there's no way of establishing that. So like, for me, I kind of have issues with being withholding someone new coming on to a standard that wasn't even available to us at that time, right? So what I'm kind of sort of more in favor of is us giving our opinion of what we think makes a good committee member and maybe presenting that maybe we do that as individual statements maybe we do that as a collective statement but mm -hmm. but not to have any sort of binding guidelines that's that's mm -hmm. kind of my only my input i guess miss spitzer i guess my other concern is like i generally agree with all of these like peter said they're they're qualities that you would like but i'm also worried about the way in which implicit bias in terms of gender or race could end up as making people making assumptions about somebody's commitment and flexibility. Like, oh, I see a mom here. She doesn't have the flexibility that this, you know, male person. Does. So I'm just thinking like some of this is gonna potentially in ways that we don't actually think about. And, and that's gonna come into all of this interviewing process. But just because we as a district are doing so much work on implicit bias, um, when we're hiring and trying to get a more diverse um, group of people working in our schools, I'm kind of thinking the same thing with our um, lens should be applied to what we're putting into our selection guidance. And I don't know how to do that properly. And I, I'd almost, um, therefore, I don't know if it's better to err on the side of doing nothing to, to you know, like to not have this statement, or if it's um, better to try to apply that lens and think about how we could write it in a way that tries to not trigger some of these potential pitfalls. And I haven't had the time to think this through thoroughly. So um, I'd almost wish kind of like Doreen were on the call because I know she's kind of our in-house expert on this in, in the schools, but I'd be open to anybody else's thoughts on this issue. Mr. Denling? Yeah, I, I appreciate those observations from Ms. Spitzer. Um, and I mean, I kind of went into this thinking that if we weren't all immediately on the same page, that it's probably not a great idea. <laughs> um, right. Right. <laughs> no, because I mean, like, I don't doubt for a second that everyone on this committee supports the mission of the public schools, for example. Um, but I think I, if, you know, and, and it's not like we haven't already signaled what's important to us and in a pretty definitive way. I mean, we have a very specific question, for example, about the MSBA project and process. Um, that's, you know, a question right right in there. And, and we also have a, a fairly detailed um, roles and responsibilities document. Um, so I think I think there's been enough uh, articulation of, of those kinds of, you know, principles 
from us as a committee um, and also individually. You know, we've spoken of these things now at multiple meetings. Um, I think there's enough content out there. I, I would also be a little wary of working up what we are presenting as an important document this late in the process. You know, it's, it's like five days to go before applications are due. Applications may have already been submitted. Um, and so um, uh, I was, you know, more comfortable with kind of going through these draft documents uh, at the start of the process. Uh, but now, now that we're kind of approaching the end uh, of it, um, I, I guess less so. So it's, it's no comment on the content. I think it's, they're awesome principles. And I certainly think um, uh, any town counselor who's, you know, really looking for a base level foundation or guidance could review that um, responsibilities and expectations document. They could um, uh, watch the recording of this meeting in which we all you know, gave the virtual thumbs up to these general principles. Um, but I, I think beyond that, it's it's probably um, so. It sounds to me like it's 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 most practical to 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 not go forward with something like this. I'm I'm seeing general head nodding, yeah, and thumbs upping. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, Lynn, I think what we'll do is we'll move forward with um, uh, or uh, not move forward with um, this document. So move forward without preparing a any sort of selection criteria or guidance um, for the meeting, but use um, our voting as the way that we're signaling what we think is important in a candidate. Um, so during during the actual vote voting process is when we'll we'll be sort of making a a signal to um, how we are evaluating our candidates. That's perfectly great. And I will communicate that as well on Monday night when we meet again. Um, and the other thing is uh, just to give you a heads up at this point, based on the number of candidate applications that we have, we will probably only be meeting on the 14th. We will probably not to use the 16th. So that on the 14th, we will actually meet, do the interviews, and uh, vote. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a flurry of applications between now and Tuesday at close of business. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I think All it's right. also important to, to note that it's not only because we have only two candidates, but also because everybody's schedules have been upended and now all of our voting members are going to be able to be present virtually <laughs> on the 14th. Right, right, yeah. yes, yes, thank you. Okay, I really appreciate the time you've all put into this. It's important for all of us. So I'm gonna sign off if that's okay. Yep, yeah. thank you, Lynn. Go to my, ne go to my next conference call. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, thanks. Okay. So with that, I think we've come to the uh, end of our agenda. Um, just pulling up the packet. Um, we didn't have any sort of discussion of future agenda items on, on our agenda. So, um, Ms. Dr. Morris. Yep, so I just wanted to share um that the state of emergency uh, called by uh, for the town manager has limited uh, public boards and committees, uh, some, many from meeting, and even those like this group, this body who's able to meet and the reasons for their meeting. Um, so that, that was sort of in, uh, intentional why there wasn't future agenda topics because while we're in this current state of emergency, um, it, it's not so open-ended as it typically is in terms of why this body would come together and for what reason. Uh, certainly, we talk a lot to Paul. Uh, I talk a lot to Paul multiple times a day um, these days, and um, we've been in communication and, and the chair as well. You know, we've been in frequent communication throughout this time period. But certainly, any committee members can be in touch with the chair or myself uh, about that. But there are some limitations to uh, what bodies can meet and even the bodies that can meet. Uh, what topics or uh, would be um, would warrant a meeting during a state of emergency that has been called for in the town of Amherst. So I just wanted to note that. Um... Good, thank you, that's helpful. Um, so uh, does anybody wanna make a motion? I move to adjourn. Moved, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Spitzer. 
uh, moved moved by Demling and seconded by Spitzer. Uh, there's no discussion. Um, so uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Spitzer? Spitzer, aye. Mr. Harrington? Harrington, aye. Mr. Demling? Demling, aye. And McDonald, aye. So that is uh, four, zero. We are adjourned. I don't have my gavel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And this meeting was recorded and will be uh, shared with uh, Amherst Media um, for viewing. Great. Thanks, All everybody. Right. Thanks. Stay safe, everybody.